Hello, YouTube friends. Ben Ochard here. Thank you so much for tuning in. I believe we are live. And uh, looks like Ray Sander. Ray Sander was the first one on the chat. Hey, Ray. And uh, Ray, send me your email address. I'll get you some stickers if you don't have them already. Thank you, everybody, for, for coming in today and spending a little bit of your, uh, a little bit of your weekend with me. And of course, I'm Ben Ochart, and I will be uh, I will be delivering a segment of cichlids and coffee today. Hello, Marty, Dave Hibbard, Mary Page Flynn. Hello, everybody. Hey, GP. Thank thank you for uh, for being here, GP. One of my moderators. And while I'm on the topic, big shout out to all the moderators. That's uh, that includes Kevin. I'm uh, not KG Tropicals uh, Green, and uh, Dennis, Denny, Riddell, and uh, GP, and of course the amazing Candy, who I'm sure will be on here very shortly, and uh, if she's not already. So. Um, Today's topic is the uh, 10 things for a, for a perfect aquarium. We're going to be getting into that real soon, as soon as I do some of the catch-up stuff that I normally do. And uh, for those of you who, um, who last week did a super chat, thank you so much for that. It uh, really is appreciated, and uh, it really helps to keep things rolling and uh, shows... Uh, anyway, it's just, it's just a very nice gesture when you do that super chat. I appreciate it. And um, because it was so successful, for those of you who super chat this week, any super chat over 10 bucks, I'll be happy to send you a bag of, um, if you want it, if you think you could use it, a bag of uh, pumice, pumice media. If you would like that, I'll be happy to send it to anybody who super chats over 10 bucks. And I put the 10 buck limit there because it's, it's, there's, postage involved and going to the post office blah 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 so at any rate any super chats over 10 will get a if you want it just just send me an email to ben.o.cichlid at uh, gmail and i'll be happy to get a bag of uh, of the pomace media over to you so um let's go ahead and uh do the my my usual intro which i which was done for me by uh, a couple of the uh, subscribers, and I love it so much. I'll play it for you right now. Yeah, I just love that thing. And uh, I just want to uh, make sure I got all the shout outs done. All of you who super chatted last week, thank you so much. Uh, thank you to my moderators, and most importantly, thank you to you, the folks that are watching this, either now or on the replay. I know some of you can't watch it on Saturday mornings, and so you, you catch the replay, and you're, you're also very appreciated. So um, let's get uh, into a couple, just a couple little, um, a couple quick, a couple quick plugs. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at ben.o.cichlid. I put behind-the-scenes stuff. I, I post some videos and pictures that you don't see on YouTube. So if you're on Instagram, uh, consider going there and following me. And also, we have a great Facebook page. Uh, it's got over 7,000 members. It's uh, very friendly and uh, very troll-free. And by that, what I mean is any level of any fish keeper of any kind of fish, even though cichlid is uh, kind of peppered in all of my uh, titles, any kind of fish keeper can come to this Facebook page and get some help. So. Um, uh, the Ben O apostrophe cichlid. If you're on Facebook, check it out. I think you might like it. And um, and of course, don't uh, don't forget if you haven't already uh, to hit that subscribe button and the bell and all that good stuff. And also visit the store so you can pick up one of these. And if you're drinking out of one of these, take a picture in front of your aquarium and send it to me. I'll put it in the Saturday live stream. I guarantee that coffee tastes better out of one of these cups. <laughs> I'll give you that guarantee in writing. All right. 
So um, let's go ahead and get into what's been going on and uh, enough of the enough of the commercials and plugs and uh, last week I released three videos uh, I, I was I, I missed my normal schedule I didn't release one on um, on Tuesday like I normally do I have family visiting I have uh, three of my kids uh, one of the long-term girlfriends of my youngest son and uh, so we have a full house and I got a little bit behind so my Tuesday video came out on Wednesday but I uh, I had the follow-up to docile cichlids and that was the five not docile uh, cichlids with the title uh, uh, you know killer in the uh, thumbnail which for some reason I don't know why killer every time I put the word killer killer it seems to get a lot of uh, traction that one had uh, I think it's 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 over 5,000 views and uh, and you can you can guess uh, you can figure out which uh, which fish were uh, were in there I mean if you haven't seen it already there's a there's a combination of well some of the fish that are in here I'm not going to spoil it for you but some of the fish you see in this video clip are uh, are on that list and it might surprise you if you haven't watched the video uh, which one I listed as the number one for uh, not docile and uh, anyway if you haven't caught that video check it out you might you might uh, you might like it and uh, also, uh, I, I, I released a video that tore apart the um, tore apart the 100 gallon, and uh, it, it's probably interestingly enough, despite being one of my mo probably the most popular or most liked tanks, it actually is my simplest. Uh, it's my simplest setup of uh, all of my tanks, and uh, and so I, I took that tank and I tore it I, I tore it down. And uh, did a breakdown on it, and uh, shared that with with you folks, and and uh, just sort of piece by piece, and uh, uh, it got a, a good, it got a good response, and it didn't have the uh, the sort of provocative uh, the provocative uh, uh, clickbait uh, sort of <laughs> thumbnail of the 150 breakdown, which. Uh, which I'll get into in a second. So it, it, it kind of went around 1,500, 2,000 views. But it starts off with, you know, it, it goes all the way from the from the sponge, from the intake sponge, uh, the pre-sponge filter, all the way through to the uh, to the fluval and the substrate and uh, rocks and plants. It just breaks it down piece by piece, and uh, it got it got it got a pretty good uh, pretty good response, and. Uh, and then the other video that I released, uh, which had the more provocative thumbnail, and, and I think because of that got a lot more traction on the 150. It was, I think it's about, it's probably almost at 5,000 views now, but it's uh, fully exposed uh, was the name of the title, was the title of that, of that uh, thumbnail. And uh, it breaks down the 150, the tank that's right, right here behind me, and gets into great detail on it. And um, it's a... Uh, uh, let me show you just a little clip here from it. You can see a little clip. This is how it started, and it. This is probably, um, in some ways, it's simple because some do have a sort of simple quality to them. It was about 100 degrees, by the way. So I, this thing was filmed in a tank top, but it's about. A, uh, but it it is a, once you understand some, they're a very simple type of filtration. This tank has a very simple filtration on it, and. Um, uh, in my mind, even though the, the, the sump itself, the components, you've got sponges, you've got uh, media, different uh, three three types of no, four types of media actually. You've got um, anyway. There, there's there's just a lot going. Um, there's a lot inside the sump itself, but the sump itself as a system basically is just a. Imagine a giant hang on back filter that just happens to be under your tank. That's basically all you have with a sump. Uh, to put it in the most simple form and uh, you know water comes into it goes through your media and then is returned to the tank just like would happen in a in a uh, in in a with an h with an hob so just imagine when you think of a sump just imagine a very large hang on back filter that just happens to be under your tank and uh or you can uh or maybe a, uh, a canister turned on its side you know or i mean just it, it's a very simple system once you get your wits around it so um, 
so that's those were the videos that were that were released and uh, and the responses were good there was also a um, I'll give you a, a little a quick little peek here before we get into the topic on the upcoming uh, some of the upcoming videos we have uh, the breakdown of the 60 gallon which interestingly enough is probably one of my most uh, elaborate setups even though being the smallest tank is the tank I sort of learned on and uh, made mistakes and was kind of learning and and doing things after the fact and as a result it, it's uh, probably a bit more complicated or elaborate than it needs to be but um, and you notice I went with a more provocative thumbnail the, the truth revealed <laughs> about the 60 gallon that's the uh that's the juvie hap nation tank this is hap nation here you can see it was the original idea of uh evan alexander ifg i, I stole it and made juvie hap nation so uh, that that one's coming up and i also did another trip down to covina california to visit um ck fish world and um, i had a video where I paid a visit to that place a, a while back that, where I found the electric blue uh, cichlid in the tank behind me. And uh, it, it's just a great shop, very friendly, uh, kind of old school in some ways, very, uh, very heavily stocked with supplies. And uh, anyway, I, I wanted to visit a, a, a store that was just coming out of this this uh, lockdown that we've all been we've all been in you know we've been in this people haven't been able to really get out that much uh, some stores have had to close down now that they're open people have to come in in regulated numbers they have to wear masks blah 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 at least it's still that way here in California with this COVID-19 thing so uh, I wanted to go visit the store and just see how they're doing in in um, uh, in light of all of this and um, I think you'll like it. I think you'll like the video. And um, if you're certainly, if you're in uh, in the in the Covina area, check out uh, CK CK Fish World. It's a great great place. I think I got a, a message from somebody that uh, they they were on their way to. This is before I had even uh, posted the video. They said, "Hey, I'm on my way to CK to buy a stand from my aquarium." I was like, "Oh, geez, I was just there." So. Anyway, it's about a half hour from my house. Not too bad. So, um, in other news, uh, there was a uh, there was a milestone that was uh, a couple milestones that were hit. You know, I like to I like to thank you folks for these because you're the ones that make these milestones happen. And uh, uh, the channel had 211,000 views in 28 days. That's uh, higher than the normal uh, 130 to 170 some odd views on average so 211,000 that's a nice jump in a 28 day average and uh, of course I broke 25,000 subs you knew that from last week and also I broke uh, 4.5 million views so the 4.5 million uh, view milestone was was uh, exceeded and uh, Facebook uh, or rather uh, YouTube uh, gives gives you an electronic certificate as a, an award so <laughs> So uh, they really, uh, so just something kind of kind of cool. And I thank you folks for that because uh, you're the ones that make that happen, really. So um, let's jump into today's topic. And, and by the way, I've been, um, I've been putting date stamps, or not date stamps so much as time stamps under the live streams. If you folks have used those, to navigate the live streams, let me know. I'd like to know your opinion of that. See if it's helping at all. And um, let me see here real quick. I'm going to look at the chat. And uh, hey, a, a shout out to um, Michael Ferguson. Love the videos this week. Hope everyone will super chat and support your efforts. You will learn a lot from Ben and this group. Hey, thank you, Michael. Very appreciated, my friend. That is very nice of you. And if you would like a bag of media, a bag of that uh, pumice, uh, I don't know if I ever said, did I, did I already send you one? But if you would like a bag of that, just let me know. Just 
just uh, let me know at ben.o.cichlid at gmail and I will go ahead and get that over to you and uh, let's do this quick adjustment okay let's see if I missed anything else here that I miss any other super chats okay very very good and yes on the timestamps from Ray okay good Ray thank you so much for that and uh, Chevy Fish likes him as well and so does Riley and okay somebody loves the mirror in the back uh, let me see okay <laughs> you can see the you can see my back <laughs> Yeah, good thing I'm wearing pants today. So um, let's go back to today's topic. And uh, you know me, I like to make lists. And so I've got a list here of the 10 things. Uh, now this is the, the, the 10 things for the per, for what I consider the perfect aquarium. And and I, I just want to be real clear. The, these always keep in mind, this is one guy's opinion. This is not uh, by any state, any stretch of the imagination this is not aquarium gospel here this is my my opinion based on my experience that i'm sharing with you and uh, you may find that you uh, agree with some of these points you may find that you don't you may find that some of them apply to what you have going on currently you may find that you have never had this going on and wouldn't want it to be going on so uh, i just want to preface this with with uh it's not intended in any way to um, make any anybody's aquarium seem less, or um, or may, or give anyone uh, aquarium anxiety. That is not my intention. <laughs> so let me talk about these ten points, and I'm going to go from from the um, from you know probably the least, um, and I think all ten are important, but I'm going to go from the from what I consider to be the the least significant to the greatest significant okay so from like one to ten with ten being i think the the most vital and uh, so the, these are the ten the the ten things for the for what i consider to be the perfect aquarium and i want you folks to comment on them and also of course uh to go ahead and list anything you think i might have missed from this list just be sure to uh you know note it on the chat or in the comments if you're watching this after it posts to uh uh, to you uh, to YouTube but uh, number one number one is uh, understood and uh, what do I mean by that I mean that you put uh, put together a sense uh, put things together in a sensible fashion that you really understand and uh, unfortunately you see a lot of folks uh, throwing uh, things into their aquarium uh, doing things to their filtration, uh, doing things to uh, how they run things uh, based on something that they saw, but they don't really quite understand it, but they go ahead and do it. And um, I, I think in, in hindsight, I've, I've certainly made mistakes when I, when I followed a trend or did something because I didn't quite get why they were suggesting that, but I thought I'd try it and, uh, and then found out that it, it, it had an adverse uh, effect so I think that uh, the list of a, a perfect aquarium would have to include that that the person who has that aquarium really understands what's going on what's going on why is what's going on with their filtration their media their substrate their you know the combination of fish the behavior of the fish the uh, what impact is the lighting having is the uh, how long they have their lights on versus off the lighting of their room the the uh, the way they run their heaters uh, the, the um, you know all they understand it they have their wits around it and uh, that to me would be uh, part of the perfect part of the perfect aquarium setup is that the person that has it really gets it and that's not something that happens right away uh, it, it's uh, you know what I what I say right we're always be learning uh, we all learn from each other <clears throat> we're constantly getting new new uh, understanding and understanding the reasoning behind why we do things with the tanks and so that's to me uh, uh, a perfect tank would be one that that I really really 
understand what's going on and um, I haven't done something because it was fashionable and uh, or I saw in someone else's tank and I rushed out to do it and I didn't really understand and I ended up offsetting the the parameters or something in my tank or I got to have it because it's the latest and the greatest you know you see trends like that it the fish world is sort of fashionable inside it's like a it's like fashion sometimes you know every, everybody's got to have uh, you know this kind of media everybody's got to have this kind of uh, you know inside the the, the tank uh, do-it-yourself uh, you know powerhead driven filter because they saw it on on this popular YouTube channel anyway so it's number one under under uh, a tank that's really understood by the fish keeper uh, number two number two is uh, and this is probably gonna be different from what you expected the whole list might is probably gonna be different because it's not I'm not just gonna say pretty fish uh, nice lights uh, <laughs> you know 10 time water turnover you know 10 times gallons per hour of your total that's not where this list is this list is somewhere else uh, number two is uh, a sustainable a sustainable uh, and, and what do I mean by that sustainable uh, not more than you can handle that to me would be a perfect tank uh, not a setup or a number of setups for those of you with multiple tank syndrome uh, a setup that that doesn't provide so much um, so much work that that it's pulling from other areas of life and because of that actually creating stress like uh, you're neglecting other things that you should be doing and uh, because you're, you're doing all of this so, and it's starting to become a burden on you you're, you're starting to resent it uh, boy I'd rather be doing this today but I've got to I've got to work on this and uh, so that to me is slipping over into what is called not sustainable you also have factors like economics like financially is it sustainable what is it doing to your electric and water bill and uh, is it pulling you away from income producing activity things of this nature so sustainable uh, not more than you can handle without causing stress in other areas of life not requ not requiring more time or physical effort I've had folks who have told me that they have back issues they picked up a large canister filter now they have trouble moving it uh, they uh, you know there's there's so this is this would slip into the realm of uh, not sustainable only because of the physical limitations uh, that happen with the person so uh, not requiring more time or effort than you can put in uh, not crossing over into the line of being uh, uh, too much work or a chore now this is different uh, let me be very clear on this this is very different from um, shop owners you know, if uh, uh, Josh, if you're out there, James, if you're out there, uh, you know, you, you shop owners, you that's work. It's work, and and it's what you do, and and you have your you know, hundred, two hundred, three hundred tanks, and you've got to put in the work, and so um, that's different from the hobbyist who is trying to do something that is uh, therapeutic, relaxing and uh and then it starts to slip into this is just a pain in the rear i don't want to be indoors all day today i'm gonna you know and then the next thing you know they're skipping maintenance and uh then there's a big crash and uh you know the story so number one is understood number two is sustainable number three um <clears throat> and you might find this uh funny coming from me and watching the evolution the things I've been through but number three is uh, simple a perfect tank uh, would be uh, would be simple easy and sensible not over the top and just enough to get the job done so you don't have um, you know 25 uh, power heads on on timers that rotate them you know every every half hour interval or you don't have a uh, you know some type of, of a of a you know a program on your lighting that emulates a storm that then is followed by a, a dawn that then has you know, you know all that stuff is kind of cool and and uh, but you know for me I think there's a certain elegance in uh, in, in 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 simplicity and um, let me do one thing hold on just one second please
little bit of a power warning, so I want to make sure my test, my strip, power strip is good. All right, so we're good to go. All right, so simple. I think simple is good. Uh, number four, number four on my list, for those of you keeping track, number four is uh, eye candy. <laughs> and by that, what I mean is um, it, it's decorated and aesthetic. It's done in a way so that um, when you look at it, you it it's very pleasant. People come into your house and look at it and go, "Wow, that is really pretty," and um, you know there's an aestheticness to it. And my viewpoint on tanks, uh, in a lot of ways, is that they're a lot like uh, canvases, and uh, we're, we're constantly painting on our canvases. We're constantly. Um, you know, doing doing a touch up or work on that canvas, and uh, and it's like a work of art in, in my mind. It's like it's like a work of art. So that when you you walk in, you look at it, you go, wow, this is like a a, a painting that's hanging in a museum, and it's very pretty, and I like it. And uh, you know, you should have that. That should be the the reaction. So uh, number four is eye candy, aesthetic decor. Uh, you know, attractive, healthy. Uh, you know, colorful fish. Uh, you know, back background, substrate, lighting, all of it sort of dialed in to give you the best, uh, the best aesthetic, the best look, and uh, that to me is part of the perfect, the perfect tank. Number four. Uh, number five uh, is fish are the focus point, and let me tell you what I mean by that. And if you do this fine that's your thing and if you like it again I'm gonna say this is my opinion this is what I think and and you may or may not agree with it and that's okay you you run your tank the way you run your tank but uh, for me uh, I think your tank should have um, the focus should be not on a uh, you know a Star Wars battle scene and a uh, you know you and, and, and a Lego castle and, and then a, uh, you know, it, it, when someone looks at the tank, the entertainment uh, value of the tank should be the fish. Uh, this is why I, I uh, you know, I really, I really love that, that, uh, that 100 gallon because it's just black and black. And then you've got some, you know, some plants as accents, a little bit of that artificial green there. But really it's just black and black and, and it's sort of blacked out and and the fish are that's where that's where the attention goes that's where the eyes go of people that come in it's that's the show is the fish and um, so I don't like uh, I, me personally I, I don't like tanks that have uh, uh, distraction in them too much too much too much going on now if you have a uh, you know a, a Disney themed castle with you know Cinderella and the seven dwarves and Sleeping Beauty and the whole night. Hey, that's your thing and that's okay. And uh, I'm not here to, to judge. And for me, my taste, I like the fish being the focus point. Uh, number six, number six is um, uh, not too loud. And uh, let me tell you what I mean by that. Uh, and I've worked real hard on this tank behind me and I still have more stuff to do. I'm going to do some hard plumbing on it. Uh, but uh, having a tank that is, um, uh, you know, it does, it's not making too much racket. You know, things aren't buzzing and humming and uh, there isn't too loud. I mean, I don't mind a little bit of the water movement noise, you know, because I, you know, I run power heads that break up the surface and things of that nature. But, but um, so there's always a little bit of some water noise. And certainly when you have a, what's called a drip or a trickle um, uh, some system, you're going to have that water sound going on, and I, I don't mind that. I actually find that kind of uh, kind of relaxing. But I, but I don't want it. Like I used to have an aquarium um, in my in our previous residence that was in the same room as the television, and we had to turn the TV way up because I had these two monstrous. I think they were called uh, Whisper 90s or something like that. They were massive hang-on back filters. And the water would come cascading over, and 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 just had a tremendous amount of splash noise. And and uh, for that room and that application, it was way too loud. 
And so I went to, uh, that's what moved me into canister filters uh, because they were very, very quiet. Uh, and that's when one massive plus to canisters when they're running right uh, and they're not you know, buzzing or, or uh, making any kind of, uh, you know, taking in air. When they're set up correctly and functioning right, it's a totally quiet uh, situation. So um, number six, not too loud. And uh, number seven, and this is uh, African cichlid specific, and, uh, but you could apply it to other fish, I guess. Uh, but with African cichlids in particular, number seven is uh, controlled aggression. And notice I say controlled aggression because with cichlids, you're probably never going to get no aggression. Uh, maybe with Shelleys, maybe with Lethranops, some Placidochromis, but you know, I put that list of docile uh, cichlids out, but even even they'll get occasionally, like all, you know, into a little bit of a chase. Uh, but with African cichlids, being on top of it enough and in touch with it enough, watching it enough, so that you can tell that something is going on before it turns into, uh, you know, the death of one of the fish. Like right now in the tank behind me, believe it or not, my Malawi trout all of a sudden has it out for the Fusco. I don't know what happened. Uh, I don't know what, again, what little switch flipped in his trout brain, but for some reason he's targeting the, um, the Fusco now. And the Fusco is a big hardy fish uh, and the trout has surpassed him in size and now has surpassed him in aggression. So, so the trout has become a, uh, is becoming a bit of a, a bit of a jerk when he was usually very passive. And uh, so I'm watching it very closely. I don't want him to kill that Fusco. I don't know what I'd do with the Fusco. I'm not going to give up that trout. That trout's amazing. Uh, so I'm not sure. That Fusco, I grew him out from a half inch, one inch, uh, juvie, I'm kind of attached to him, so maybe I'd put a divider in the tank for a little while, or maybe put uh, the Fusco in the 30 gallon, let him take, get a break, maybe ca you know, catch his breath. Uh, number eight, uh, number eight on the list is uh, redundancy and backups. Redundancy and backups, and this is, I know I, I talked about simple and sustainable. And so now I come along and I add to that backups and redundancies uh, so that you have systems that can kick in in the event of failure. So what, what do I mean by that? And why do I feel that this is actually part of being simple and sustainable? I think you should have a, uh, I think you should have another filter sitting in a closet somewhere that uh, you can you can bring into play right away if you need to. I have two, uh, currently, uh, two 704Bs and a hang on back filter that are dry and in a closet, right? I have, uh, uh, I think you should have media that is, that is uh, you know, hidden behind one of the rocks in your tank that is getting like a piece of sponge that's heavily seeded with bacteria that you can pop into a quarantine tank right away. And um, I think you should have a battery powered uh, air pump that in the event of a power failure, uh, you can go ahead and, and, and drop a stone into the, into the tank and, and have oxygen going on. Um, so backups and redundancies, uh, just because stuff happens, you know, equipment fails, uh, you can have power outages, you can have all sorts of things. So have some seeded media so you can, you can uh, rapidly get a, get a filter going or get an emergency tank going. Uh, a battery powered, uh, battery powered pump, I think. They have, now they have these, uh, what are they called? The UPSs, the, 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 the backups. They used to have them years ago for computers, but they were only good for like an hour or something. I hear now they have affordable ones that can run for hours and hours. I think that that would be a good idea, uh, the UPS backups. But uh, again, redundancy and, and uh, in a perfect aquarium situation, there would be some, some type of backups 
that you would have available to, uh, to you an empty aquarium or a tub, you know, a tub that is sitting somewhere or uh, a 10, 20, 30 gallon tank sitting somewhere that you can immediately uh, fill up, you know, with tank water, throw one of those sponges inside of a hang on back that you've had sitting in your aquarium being seated and, and get that thing running and throw somebody like my Fusco in it so he can hang out there. So redundancy and backups. Uh, number nine, uh, number nine is, and this is just a personal pet peeve of mine because of what I've been through personally. Uh, number nine is a very, very well oxygenated uh, tank, just a lot of oxygen. And I think this is an area where uh, some fish keepers, they, they kind of wink at or, or, or don't really look for. I know I didn't. And they, they consider that it's normal that a fish is working his mouth or her mouth, you know, on a regular basis. Um, you know, look at your fish. For the most part, their mouths should be closed. They should never look like they're uh, struggling to breathe. And if they do, something is very wrong. And um, so now how do you oxygenate? Well, bubblers, certainly, right? Bubblers, uh, power heads. That are, that are doing two things. One, breaking up the surface uh, by making water movement, breaking up the surface, letting oxygen exchange to occur. Also a power head low in the aquarium that can take low oxygen water from the bottom of the tank and circulate it around so you're getting rich oxygen throughout the tank. Uh, you can position, uh, hang on back filters are great for oxygen because they break up the surface as they return water to the tank. So you're getting the benefits like of a bubble of a bubbler in a lot of ways and uh, or a power head if you have hang on back filters. So I think that's a great way to oxygenate. Um, positioning your canister outputs so that they break up the surface. The canister outputs on the Sun Sun 302s that I have on my 60 gallon are sort of half, maybe a third out of the water. And so they they create a stream almost across the surface, breaking it up, creating a lot of oxygen, and those fish are never gasping for for uh, uh, never gasping for oxygen. So canister outputs, hang on backs are great. Power heads, bubblers. Uh, certainly, if you have a sump and you have water that's that's going through a drip system like I do, that water is getting super oxygenated, and then it goes through another chamber where I have these these uh, algae scrubbers that have air pumps. So that water is getting oxygenated, then it's getting returned. So there's a lot of oxygen going on, you know, oxygenation going on here. Plus, I have a, a, a power head that's low, pushing, creating water circulation, and I have a uh, the output of the uh, of the pump. So a perfect tank in my mind would be a tank with uh, that is very very well oxygenated. You never see the fish gasping or working their mouths unless they're excited and they're they've just been in a chase. Uh, just like we get winded, they get winded, um, or they're you know they're in the middle of eating, you know something like that. Um, and number ten, and this is uh, in my mind the most important one, number ten. And uh, and I think it's so key. I think it's very very key. It's certainly key for me. Uh, and I'd like to hear what you think about it. Uh, are 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 you and number ten is are you happy? Are you happy? Are you satisfied? And do you enjoy your tank? And that's the, the, the key, that's the reason we do all of it, so that, uh, and a perfect tank would be a tank that you you sit there and you just feel this sense of joy or relief or, uh, you know, this, 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 this great feeling of, uh, you know, it, it, it relaxes you, it, it, it reduces your stress, it makes you happy when you look at it, and you enjoy it. Now, this is you, you enjoy it, not, it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks about the tank that you have. Is it too small? Is it not set up right? Does it have the wrong fish? Does it have the, none of that, none of, none of anyone else's opinions matter one bit in this number 10. What matters with number 10 here is, do you enjoy it? And if you like it and it gives you joy and relaxation, that is to my mind a, a big part of the perfect tank, okay? So that's my uh, list of the 10 things that I think make up a perfect tank. And uh, 
let me let me get some of your thoughts here uh, by looking at the uh, look at what you have to say hey Marty Marty thanks for that super chat now you folks know that I, I usually because I like to uh, have my attention on what I'm talking with you about I don't often look at the chat and I'm sorry if I miss your question sometimes it doesn't mean I'm ignoring you uh, and uh, but I, I do I do look look over at it and uh, Michael Ferguson you came in again <laughs> five dollars for Vinny <laughs> the tank boss <laughs> thank you Michael I appreciate that my friend very nice of you and thank you Marty very very appreciated so uh, let's take a look here at some of the comments that you folks are making and uh, I'll try and catch some of them I like I said I, I don't I don't look at the comments as I go because it it, it it can be very distracting and and pull me off the subject and uh, Dave is in Glendora hey you're you're not that far from me Dave let's see okay someone says uh, there's a there's a dispute as to who was first uh, I'll tell you what uh, both of you uh, send me your address to ben.o.cichlid I'll send you both some stickers and we'll call it a tie how's that so <laughs> all right and let's see here as I scroll through If you have any questions about that list or any comments about that list, I would like to hear them. Ray Sander, Hulk Hogan. I thought Ben raided Zenzo's closet. <laughs> I've got a little a little bulking up to do before I get up to Zenzo's level, that's for sure. Not sure if I want to put in that much work. All right, let's see here. Jeff, that was me, Ben. Thank you very much. Uh, Jeff, are you talking about uh, going to uh, uh, going over to CK Fish World? That was you. Very cool. Let's see. Okay. Chevy Fish, one of my Shelleys, Maltese didn't get the memo about not being non-aggressive he seeks out and tears the other males apart it is his mission when the fish clubs open back up he's out of here wow well i tell you it, it's uh sometimes uh we know they're territorial we know they're territorial the way they they protect their their, their shells i guess some of these fish they they um and i've had fish like that when i had mabuna on, on that list of uh, fish that are not docile. Uh, I talk about this, but I've had Mabuna that would claim, you know, like the entire middle section of the tank and everything outside of that, nobody was supposed to be there. And uh, they were they were just uh, vicious. So, uh, and they wouldn't let other people eat because they would, they would uh, clear everybody out when it was time to eat. And so it became very, uh, very difficult. All right, let me see. Let's see here. Knight Rider, tell us about when you first fell in love with Africans. Well, Knight Rider, it, it was, um, I always had an interest in them. You know, I'd see them in, 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 uh, in stores and uh, I was, I was kind of blown away by the colors. And uh, like most people, some of my, some of the first ones I saw were Mabuna because those are the ones you see you know your um, your yellow labs, your uh, you know your blue, uh, your yellow tail, uh, blue mabunas, uh, you know ones like that. And I really, I really liked the colors I was seeing. I, I almost thought uh, that a yellow lab was salt, a saltwater fish, and I was surprised to find out it was it was freshwater. And this was um, several years ago, but but I knew, uh, I sort of knew instinctively that they were an aggressive breed, and I couldn't bring them home and throw them in with some discus that I was keeping at the time. 
So um, then what I did, which is covered in one of my 10 tips videos, probably the most popular video I ever released, I, I started watching videos on YouTube's on YouTube, in particular um, videos by um, by John and Lisa and uh, by Jay Wilson, who back then were all all about cichlids. Uh, they were all about African cichlids. That was all they kept, and um, and so I became very enthused by looking at, at their uh, at their fish, and um, and I still made a lot a lot of uh, mistakes in the the fish the combinations of fish I put together in the um, in, in some of the ways I set up the tank. So it's it's been a, an ongoing learning process. But it was maybe six years ago, I think, and and uh, the colors just like. We're like, whoa, what is this, you know? It's not salt, but it has colors like salt. And I think the rumor is, is that the Rift Lakes were originally a body of salt water and water levels changed and uh, the Rift Lakes became separated from the oceans and started to get fed by fresh water sources, uh, you know, local rivers, runoff, things of this nature. And over thousands of years, these fish became uh, freshwater fish, but their their genus, their you know they originate in salt, and so um, I think that's why they pop. So it's just the colors that kind of blew me away, and I fell in love with them at that point. Uh, Marty comes in with another dollar ninety nine. Thank you, sir. I appreciate the support of the channel. Comes in handy, I assure you, when I uh, have to convince my wife why I take over the bedroom every Saturday morning for several hours. <laughs> Here's 20 bucks, honey. <laughs> All right. So uh, someone is suggesting buying a small generator. Now, see, generators, if you have a generator for a power outage, that's the best the best solution. But but let's say you have an aquarium and you're in an apartment. Uh, it's You can't do that, really. You know, it's so it, it's not practical for, for a lot of us uh, to do something like that. Uh, Bang Li or Lai, why my Eureka doesn't like pellet food like Hikari? I've never used Hikari, so I, I can't comment on that food. Uh, I wouldn't try and force it. I would just switch foods, uh, maybe try a flake, maybe try soaking them first and see if that changes things. You can also use products like Focus and, or add garlic. Uh, like a garlic guard that'll make it more palatable but you know why mess with it uh, just switch you know try extreme or try uh, Northfin or cobalt um, cobalt probiotic uh, predator uh, pellets my fish love those uh, there's a lot of great food out there if the fish is rejecting it um, I wouldn't mess with it let's see here Dave Shell, uh, Dave Shelley. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Lost my job two years ago, and all of my tanks and fish. I'm back with better job and more money, and of course more tanks and cichlids. Hey, good job, good job, man. You know, we. Uh, uh, I could tell you some stories about some lows that I've hit uh, with uh, uh, with four children. It's uh, that, uh, and we bounce back, don't we? We're pretty resilient. Let me just say that I once went to the uh, to the to the uh, ATM machine, and I couldn't get twenty dollars out of it. Let's just and leave it there. Leave it at that. <laughs> um, Mike has a question about Saprochromus. I don't. I'm not familiar with that fish. I'm sorry, I can't answer that question. And um, let's see. Dave is cooking barbecue outside. Well, David, if you if you if you, once you brought it up, you got to share. I'm sorry, man. You got to. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Go ahead and include them in the chat. 
and I will try and get to them. I cannot promise or guarantee. And I thank all of you that have uh, put a little money in. Let's take a look at that trout. This is the trout that is starting to assert himself. And as you can see, he is a big, meaty, beefy fish. And uh, I don't think he's, he's going to be able to take over from Vinny. But because uh, Vinny is, uh, you know, he's just kind of a calm and passive and controls the show. But uh, the trout is going to be putting on more size. They can get up over 15 inches. And uh, as you can see, he's also a camera hog today. He is large and uh, trying to be in charge. The Fusco was second. No, I take it back. The eye biter is second in the pecking order. Fusco is number three. So now the trout who is posing for us is now number three. And I maybe he'll try and knock out the eye biter and then probably maybe try and go after Vinny. Uh, we'll see. We'll see where that where that ends up. Hopefully it's not gonna be too violent. You can see right now they're not interested in each other one bit. All right. Night Rider. Those are real fish. Ocho. So beautiful. Hap Nation. Hey, Night Rider. Thank you, my friend. Aqua Balls, Ben, I make a mean barbecue. Stop by my place. Aqua Balls, send me your address, my friend, ben.o.cichlid, and I will make arrangements and come by. And I heard your father's a good cook, too. He has a restaurant, right? I didn't forget about that. So, uh, all right, let's keep going here. Any more comments? Uh, there, Yes, there is that. Niles M, isn't that trout eventually too big for that tank? This is 150 gallon. I believe it goes about 24 inches front to back and um, six feet across. So I think I'm gonna need either an eight foot or a 10 foot tank. And I have a move coming up to uh, Nashville. So I'm not really sure what that transition is gonna do. It might mean, um, selling the fish and starting over with a new tank, in which case I would go with an eight or 10 footer. Um, staying in cichlids, moving out of cichlids, uh, getting into other fish. I'm not really sure exactly where this change is gonna take me. Depends on what we end up with in Nashville. Uh, we are shopping for a place that has a room that can be dedicated as a fish room. So um, it's gonna be some interesting times. Uh, I'm thinking possibly of reaching out to some local fish stores. Uh, maybe Nolan can take my fish and ship them to me. Uh, maybe I can do a deal with James, uh, James Largo over at the Cichlid Shack. Maybe he can take them and then ship them to me. I mean, there's, I've got a lot of things going through my head. I'm not sure what I'm going to do, which fish I'm going to keep. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, Scott, if you could have any fish that you don't already have, what would it be and why? You know, Scott, it's funny you asked that. I was thinking the other day, uh, I really miss having a, a Nimbochromus linny. A Nimbochromus linny. It is a goofy, goofy looking fish. He has a snout that's designed for uh, sucking little fish from between rocks. Uh, he's a predator hap and um, just a beautiful pattern on the body. And I had a real beautiful one, but uh, ended up losing him. And so a linny, uh, I'd love to have a linny. Uh, the, I also, I'm intrigued by uh, geophagus, the geo, the geos. I just think they're beautiful fish. I think they have uh, uh, just a, the way they sift around the sand. And uh, anyway, I just, I just think they're, they're, they're great looking uh, fish. And I hope to have one someday. And uh, uh, Dave, yes, uh, Dave, I think I am going to be selling uh, 
most, if not all, of the equipment. Uh, tanks, canopies, hoods, lights. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how much of a fresh start I want to have or, uh, or how much uh, do I want to take with me. Again, these are all things that are on the, on the drawing board right now. I was thinking of contacting a local fish store and saying, hey, give me this much and take it all. You know, take all the tanks, take everything, and I'll just use that money as startup money for the fish room in Nashville. So, um, you know, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Uh, Ahmed uh, Mustafa Wahij, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, uh, Ahmad. Um, how do you feed a pleco in a cichlid tank? I have to, I have to feed at the far left, and then the far right, and then the far left, and really just, um, uh, just bounce around and and hope that some of it gets down to the pleco, and uh, the pleco is able at, you know, is able to kind of jump on some of it. In the 100 gallon, I disconnect the. Um, in the 100 gallon, I, di I disconnect the. The algae scrubber and I open it up and it has, a tremendous, bounty of, of algae on it, and the um, and and the and the pleco gets on it and just, and just gorges uh, himself, for about a day. It's gotten to the point where I don't have to clean that algae scrubber. I just open it up and leave it there, and the pleco just gorges on it. Other fish, uh, the Benga sunshine loves it for some reason. Uh, the, um, so other, the clown loaches love it, and uh, they just, so they eat like crazy on there. Now, all that being said, the albino uh, pleco in the 100 was getting pretty skinny. So I took him out, I put him in the 30 gallon, and now he's getting uh, food and a couple algae wafers. Uh, and so he's gonna fatten up and then I'll put him back in the 100. I just noticed that his belly was getting a little bit thin for my taste. Um, but the the, al the uh, pleco in this tank is a beast and is able to get on top of food right away. And the pleco in the, uh, in the 60, because he's under a rock that has holes in it. So when I drop food, the the food goes through the holes in the rock to, and the pleco is able to get it and block the fish out. So, um, so that setup is perfect. Uh, and, um, but it is, it is a struggle because the cichlids are so aggressive at getting anything before it ever hits the bottom. So it is a struggle. You got to get real clever with it. Maybe set up an area in the tank where only the pleco can get to, but has little small openings on top that the food can go through. I have a Cynodonus catfish that is inside of an artificial log in the 60 gallon. And that's where he stays and little f pellets of food go in the log. The other fish can't get in the log. And so the Cynodonus is able to eat inside that log. My only concern is that he's going to get too fat and not be able to get out of the log. So that'll be an interesting problem. So uh, I, hope that, I hope that helps. Okay. Uh, no, Mike, I don't have any experience with feather fins. Uh, I see a fin like that. It makes me think, well, here's something for fish to uh, to peck at. Uh, Shanna, Shanna Nay. Hey, everyone, I'm trying to lower my nitrates. I do weekly 75% water changes. And by the end of the week, my nitrates are in the 40 to 80 range. I have an FX6 with a three and one power head on a 75 gallon. Um, depending on your stocking, uh, how heavily you're stocking, uh, that kind of a jump in nitrates might not necessarily be, I mean, if you're real heavily stocked, you might not, that isn't necessarily that wild or crazy. Um, I would check your tap. I mean, let's first benchmark your tap. Let's see what's coming out of your tap. If you're getting 10, 15, 20 parts per million out of your tap, you have a real uphill battle. Uh, uh, otherwise, um, let me see, 75% water change. Yeah, even with something, well, I don't know, if you have nitrates coming out of your tap, again, it, it's gonna be a real struggle. Now, the other side of that is this. There is a school of thought that seems to think that unless you're over 100, you don't need to worry. 
that, that we worry too much about nitrates. I'd like to hear what your thoughts are. Those of you on this live stream, what are your thoughts? I've heard people say that, that uh, you don't have to worry until you get to 100. I've had other people say that if it's a 10, they start to, you know, they, if it gets over 10, it starts to get over 20, they start to panic. So um, I'd like to hear what you have to say about that, folks. Ray Sander, uh, you know, Ray and Aratus, I'm telling you, Aratus needs to come with a warning label. If you saw my Not Docile, uh, Not Docile video, uh, they're beautiful. You know, you see, them in the, in the, you see them in the fish store and you go, oh, wow, that's a, that's a gorgeous fish. You bring them home and he starts to tear everybody apart. They are, uh, they are killers. Let's see here. Now, I know some people talk about uh, food and food getting into uh, filters. Let me tell you, one of the big advantages of a pre-filter sponge is that the food uh, will go to the surface of the sponge but not get sucked into the filter. And then the fish come along, and sometimes the plecos, and will eat it right off the sponge. And so that's one of the advantages of the pre-filters. Adam Moore, be careful with overcleaning. Man, that's that's true, isn't it? How many times have we cleaned our tank into killing every, everything? Uh, some comments on extreme. I used some extreme fish food that was sent to me by uh, James Largo at the Cichlid Shack, and my fish loved, loved it. And GP, I think you're right. The people that make extreme have uh, a farm, a cichlid farm, and I saw some of the fish uh, in a video, and they were some of the most colorful. He had a Bucochromus notatania that looked like a like a uh, like a parrotfish, like a saltwater parrotfish. Had the most vibrant electric color I've ever seen on a fish, and that's what got me really interested in the extreme uh, food product. Adam Moore, yeah, there are some foods that you can that you drop in, like foods you'd use on vacation. Alpha Fins, lovely T-shirt. This is from uh, this T-shirt is from IFG Evan Alexander. Looks like James from the Cichlid Shack uh, jumped in. James, I don't know if you saw. If you heard all the comments I've made about you, I've been talking about you a lot. So, <laughs> all good. <laughs> exactly, Darren. That's it. You know, we worry too much. I think we, uh, sometimes as fish keepers, we, we, we worry and we get into anxiety attacks when if we just step back and look at the fish, uh, you know, are their fins spread out? Do they have color? Uh, you know, are they active? Are they attacking their food? Are they interacting with you when you walk up? Do they come up and, and you know, greet you and think you're going to, you know, are they, you know, are the eyes look good, nice and clear and, uh, you know, good appetite? If that's going on, I, I, you know, we just need to take a breath. Niles M75 water change is too much, better to change 40. The only problem with that, uh, Niles, from my, from my experience, Niles, the the, uh, the water change that's under 50% will allow over time what I call, and what some of you have called, a uh, a nitrate creep, where you're not really, re your nitrates are getting a little bit higher, a little bit higher, and then one day you test your water and you're at 120. Um, I would say yes, you know, go go with a 20, 25% water change, and then maybe once every six, eight weeks, do a 75. I'll do, I'll do 80% on this tank, uh, because these are ammonia factories. These fish produce tremendous amounts of ammonia. So um, just watch. You know, yes, I can see why you don't want to shock the fish. So you go with a smaller, you know, a smaller uh, water change. I get that. At the same time, uh, be testing the water and and see if you're getting a little bit of a nitrate creep. And if you are, you need to go to a more extreme water change. 
Uh, this uh, one fellow I was reading, uh, I talked about him in uh, I think three live streams ago, the one that talks about the deep, uh, the deep uh, sand beds and creating uh, uh, anaerobic zones within the aquarium that can, that can consume nitrates. Uh, you know, he also talked about how when he does a water change, he would do a water change so that the fish had just enough water to cover their dorsal. He would take it down to their dorsal fin that's how big his water changes were. And he was doing it that way for years, and he said he never had a problem. Uh, so uh, I don't do it quite that extreme. I'll, I'll do 50, 60, and then maybe once, uh, you know, and sometimes 20, 25, but then sometimes I'll do a very large one. Just, just test your water at least. I know some of us get lazy on that, but test your water, even if it's just with a strip, which is real fast, uh, once, once maybe every month or so, and, and, and watch. And if, you're, if your nitrates are creeping, do a big water change otherwise you're going to fall behind uh, it's just been my experience you know whether you agree with it or not i don't know but it's been my experience um <clears throat> a chevy fish keeping water change water uh treated in a separate container yeah i i can see that uh, unfortunately if they're using uh chloramine i mean chlorine will gas off um you know the, the but but the chloramine apparently the chloramine that they're using now in almost every water municipality is using these well, chloramine it doesn't gas off it just stays there so uh letting the water sit like back in the day yes 24 hours and you were free of chlorine that's not the case anymore that chloramine's in there whoop, hit the mic there the chloramine is in there forever so uh you gotta you gotta uh, treat it but like you said it's treated water so that's good All right, let's see here. Hey, Paul, Inventory King is here. For those of you who love that uh, Maduka White Lips that I have in that 100 gallon, I bought it from Paul, the Inventory King. And if you want to see uh, an example of amazing plumbing, uh, watch, uh, watch the Inventory King's channel and take a look at how he does water changes. Oscar, um, I, sorry to hear that about your Eureka Red. You know, sometimes, yeah, they, they, they get old, they get at the end of their life cycle, and uh, all you can do is just put them in a, you know, like you say, if you leave them in the tank, the other fish are probably gonna, gonna finish them off and uh, give them an, un an ugly finish. Um, instead, what you're doing, I think, is good. Put them somewhere where he's comfortable. Uh, if he's eating, give him a little bit of food. Uh, maybe keep the lights out so that uh, you know, there's no stress whatsoever. Just have natural light that comes in. Uh, you know, that's some people will euthanize their fish. They'll use different kinds of oil or things, drops into the water, and it kills the fish. Uh, it puts them to sleep, then kills them. Uh, I've never been into euthanizing fish. I'll let a fish just die on its own. Um, so uh, sorry to hear about that. It does happen. All right. Well, if I missed anybody that did a, a super chat, I am sorry, and I thank you if you super chatted. And for those of you that did super chat, again, thank you so much for that. And I'm going to, uh, we're on the hour. We're actually running a little bit over the hour. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and thank my moderators, best moderators on YouTube, the amazing Candy, GP, Denny, and uh, Kevin. I know sometimes... You folks uh, are not on because you have to go to work or something, but I thank you all anyway. And uh, I think that's all for, for me. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. You are appreciated. And watch for my video tomorrow. Uh, I, I'm going to be tearing apart the 60-gallon. I'm going to be ending my three-part series uh, the way I started on YouTube with uh, Ben Ochart with the 60-gallon. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. You are appreciated. And uh, I think I have one more little, uh, one more plug. That's right. Be sure to subscribe, hit the bell, and visit the store. That's right. The final, the final plug. And, uh, but that's the final commercial. Thank you, everybody. You are appreciated. Hope to see you next week.